What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Blockchain Broadcast. My name is Joe with GameStarter and I'm here to bring you all the latest news about GameStarter, Dark Frontiers, and other news around the crypto and NFT spaces as well. Before we get too deep in the video, if you like this kind of content, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date on all the latest news. You can also help us grow our reach, build our community, and help others learn about all the things going on behind the scenes at GameStarter. Let's change things up and dive right into a market update as we are still stuck in this boring $18,000 to $22,000 range. The biggest thing I can say right now is don't get chopped up trying to trade against big money a lot of people lose so much more money trying to play this weird range guessing whether or not it's going to go up or down when there are other strategies like waiting for a clear trend for dollar cost averaging into a longer term investment plan that can not only make you a lot of money but be safer and help protect your funds overall remember these big money whales want nothing more than for you to get liquidated on your positions so please be safe in your trading and buying strategies I continue to dollar cost average into my long term holds as I believe crypto will survive a bear market and come out the other side of any sort of recession that we might see stronger than ever. I just don't know when and we also don't know if those higher risk plays are going to make it out alive. That being said, please protect your funds. I talked about this a little bit last week, but we've seen so many centralized exchanges have a lot of problems keeping our funds safe. I brought up Voyager as they had exposure to Three Arrows Capital, who was not able to pay them back hundreds of millions of dollars which they had borrowed, and Voyager started showing some signs that looked grim. They reduced their daily withdrawal limit from 25000 to 10000 and that was my sign to get my money off of Voyager. I got it off the morning of July 1st, which was just in time, because later that day, they suspended all trading, withdrawing, deposits, and rewards, with no timeline of when those services would be resumed. Always remember guys, not your keys, not your coins and if it's too good to be true it just might be i'm sorry to anybody whose money might be locked up right now the best thing we can do with all of this is learn from our mistakes i'm being much more skeptical about where i put my money looking for audits trying to understand the risk of the new platforms but overall i'm really trying to grow in self-custody and learn how to manage my own funds i'm currently exploring and holding a lot of my portfolio on a service called change finance they are a decentralized wallet and exchange built in the fusion network which has really cool interoperable capabilities from what it looks like your funds always remain in your custody and so far what I've found from audits and my own research it seems to be safe I'm gonna be doing more research into it I can encourage you to look into it yourself as well I am not affiliated with them at all but so far I do enjoy their product and I think more people should know about it overall though there is FUD everywhere so do be careful about getting too caught up in all the negativity and bad news that's going on don't be fearful don't get scared out of the market be smart and stay up to date make sure to do your own research but always make sure to verify what you hear we see negativity everywhere with Jerome Powell of the Fed saying the clock is ticking to get inflation under control. Many people saying that crypto was dead after this last crash. Even Bill Gates and other big corporate executives are calling crypto the biggest Ponzi scheme in human history. Well, are they right? I'm not sure what you think, guys, but I tend to believe that blockchain technology is here to stay. And I believe that the fundamentally sound projects in crypto are going to be here for the long run. So I know I'm sticking around and looking for opportunities. Now, I did see some rumors going around about KuCoin saying that they were actually behind the scenes insolvent and we're getting Getting ready to pause their withdrawals as well. Johnny, the CEO of KuCoin, put this to rest, saying we're not sure who's spreading these rumors and what their intentions are, but KuCoin does not have any exposure to Luna, Three Arrows Capital, Babel, or other funds that became insolvent. There will be no immense suffering or coin collapse, and there's no plan to halt withdrawals. Everything on KuCoin is operating well. It's definitely some much needed good news in the space. I personally have used KuCoin a bunch, and I've really enjoyed their platform. I wish them all the best, and I really hope that they can stay up and operating to full capacity, and that they can keep everyone one's fun safe. But enough about that, let's talk about some more game starter news. I'd like to quickly introduce you to Swords of Blood, one of the upcoming initial offerings on our platform. Swords of Blood is an epic quest and a fast-paced online game in which you play the hero. This game is a dark fantasy free action RPG with an immersive and high quality gameplay. When the last blade bound fell, the world was lost in darkness. But now centuries later, a brave hero rises to restore the legacy of the order and drive the evil from his homeland. Take your sword, become the last blade bound, and embark on an epic quest of vengeance to regain your honor. Boasting flashy combat, stellar graphics, and a variety of game modes, Bladebound Swords of Blood is one of the first high-quality, fast-paced hack-and-slash action RPG games on the Avalanche blockchain. In Swords of Blood, you'll be able to discover the wonderful world of Azora, master your chosen element, build murderous attack combinations, 
craft your gears, slay your opponents, and compete with other players. The initial offering does not have a set date yet, but we will keep you updated as we get more information. And as always, I do encourage you to go check out the project, do your own research, and see if this is a game and project for you. Next, a quick word on the Dark Frontiers roadmap update. Now we talked about this a lot, but we really wanted to be clear and communicate well with you about what's going on behind the scenes with Dark Frontiers. The last few months of development have really given us a better estimation on the flow of the delivery and overall goals with the game, along with those quality benchmarks that we want Dark Frontiers to meet. We want to set Dark Frontiers so far ahead of the competition, and we believe it has to be outstanding in order to succeed. And at the end of the day, we know that's what the players and investors want most of all. So the updated roadmap is now much more detailed and specific because it's now drafted by the developers themselves. Could there be more changes? Well, there could be some small ones in the future, but development is moving forward at a very rapid pace now. Keep in mind that Dark Frontiers has only been in development for a year. We've already had huge streamers test the game and live stream to their audiences. So in addition to the roadmap, the Dark Frontiers will also be expanding the team with new hires to further speed up development, allow select NFT holders to play the game. Unfortunately, it can't be all NFT holders quite yet. Deliver monthly AMAs and live streams to showcase the project's progress, announce a special Dark Frontiers project, lock in long-term partnerships with Twitch streamers, release a new theatrical trailer, and more. We greatly appreciate all your support and patience through this time, and we promise the wait will be worth it. And finally, we are still looking for questions on our social media accounts to answer in these weekly videos. And I found this question by Mao Premier asking, when will the Discord server regain its activity and hype, just like the good old days? First of all, Mao, thank you so much for being one of our OG supporters, and of course for your question and comment. I think a big reason we're not seeing quite as much hype and activity within the community is because the overall general market sentiment is negative. There's a lot of fear, there's a lot of people people not willing to invest right now, especially in smaller cap projects, as the greater economy is suffering right now. We have plans to continue beefing up our community and marketing efforts, and we are always open to suggestions, but we think as this year moves along and more is released around Dark Frontiers, we'll start to see more of that hype and excitement come back into the community. The lack of excitement is widespread throughout the space. There's less engagement on social media, there's less overall content and content creators, and there's overall just less money coming into the space. I like to reiterate that we're still here growing, building building and communicating, getting ready for that next wave of excitement and hype in the crypto space so that game start in our community will be poised to ride it to the top. As always, we're so grateful for our supporters and community. Please continue to let us know what you'd like to hear from us and how we can better serve you. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for you this week. Once again, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and join us on all our other social media accounts so you can stay up to date on all the latest news. As always, guys, I'm Joe from GameStar, wishing you all the best in your blockchain endeavors. Peace.